Well, Joe Biden is, it has two delivery modes. One is, come on, man, and the other is, now look. And we expect him to do the now look when he's telling and the come on, man, when he's trying to get some kind of approval. He did the come on, man, most of the day today, except for I, I'm not a real fan of that, that not today, not tomorrow, not ever. While I realize he's talking about revolution and that and about force to get your way, I agree with, you know, nobody should use violence, and that means left or right. And that, for me, was the only time he did the telling. The rest of the time, he did the come on, man, which is his weak, plaintive whale kind of approach. He also had a very difficult time with the speech. I mean, he feels like no energy for a guy who's just become president. You can notice that he's very focused on trying to make sure he gets this message across. If you could imagine a Ronald Reagan delivering this same message, it might have been different. But his energy levels are low. When he's on, you see that one hand? That's lack of confidence for him. You see the two hands. Mm -hmm. It's what I call holy warrior, what people would call, you know, thumbs up power. They hold their thumbs up, all of those things. But when he goes to one hand, he goes off message almost always. He frames himself. And then when he was taking the oath, I believe, this is my only opinion, that a trigger for his stuttering is the letter P. Watch him when he's taking the oath and he squints when he makes the sound of P every time. Yeah, Joe Biden uh, struggled with a stutter as a young man, a young boy, I should say, and uh, that's one of the reasons why these speeches are difficult uh, for him. Yes. You know, Mark Halpern was talking about, you know, we are, have become accustomed to rock star presidents, President Trump, you know, President Obama, uh, President Clinton, uh, big personalities, command an audience, um, and obviously we're not getting that with Joe Biden here. And, and at a time when, you know, we've made so much about the importance of the president speaking to all of America, Joe Biden doesn't seem to have the ability to do that. We, I don't think he's any great order, and nobody, I think, would think so. I think his magic for making it 47 years, I often say with politicians, they have to create a new product. Whatever his product has become is how to work behind the scenes and get things done. If compromise is what he's after and he truly compromises, that will be a different thing. But his body language certainly does not command uh, he doesn't control space he's in. You just can see that. He's, he kind of is the second fiddle all the time. Now let's see how he plays. Interestingly, if you watched his eyes, even when he was not delivering a speech, these muscles that gather up skin around your eyes and make it flex like cloth are called obicularis oculi. And when you're genuinely smiling, they engage. Mm. Watch Kamala Harris's eyes the entire time they're engaged. He's concerned. He's focused. He's concentrating so he can deliver the speech. And we didn't see it even when he sat back down in the chair. A little bit odd for me, but that's yeah. him. Well, there, there are a lot of odd things to watch today for those of us who have watched several of these presidential inaugurations with great interest and, and focused on the details here. Um, you know, I think it's also worth talking about Kamala Harris because you talked about her smile. She seems to be laughing, smiling a lot. Um, one of the things that people seem to really like about her. Do you find that genuine? Yeah, so here today, absolutely. And people can smile and be genuine about things that I may not like the fact they're smiling and genuine about. Their internal conversation may be a very different one. During the debates, that smile she uses there is very different. It's off-putting. It's a deflector. And she, much like Joe, has this, the big pasty smile, the big gigantic joker smile to deflect. That's a, a technique they both use in common. So you can watch her when she's under stress. She'll flash that big smile and tilt her head and play with her hair and tilt it, put her hair. There's something I've called in books before. I'm just a girl that a lot of women in traditionally male cultures will do that. It doesn't mean they're weak. It means get ready. They're coming back at you. Uh -huh. So we'll see that she develops her vice presidential office. Kamala Harris saying get ready for Kamala Harris, perhaps with those motions. Now, you know, of course, you're an expert on this. You, you're more perceptive, like a, like a great chef who has a great palate things that the average person can't taste. But as humans, we are conditioned to respond to these very things you're talking about. This affects their ability, again, to you know, influence us. Uh, so, you know, let's, let's look, talk about this from a kind of letter grade perspective here. In terms of the current administration's ability to speak directly to the American public, let's say Ronald Reagan, John Kennedy, uh, President Eisenhower, perhaps during his uh, farewell address, or even President Washington, they're all A pluses. What do you say for Joe Biden? So I'm going to give him a C. I think he doesn't have any energy. His his style is one or the other. And everybody in the world has been watching him for 47 years. So he needs to step up his game if he's going to deal with Putin as an intel guy. Those guys know this stuff inside mm -hmm. out and they're looking. I would say he's a C. Can he be better? Certainly. Could he be worse? Yeah. I mean, we've had guys who are hard to like. And he's just kind of 
powerless feeling in this today's speech. He could have done a much better job, and he has the capability, I think. We've seen him in the past. We also have seen him decay a bit recently. We covered the Tara Reid sex scandal thing recently, and he seemed more together in that than maybe he has in recent weeks. But then he came back out and showed a lot of energy. I think he has a lot of work to go around being powerful and emphasizing, mm -hmm. and maybe he'll just not use that as a style. Now, it's interesting you mentioned Putin. You can imagine uh, everyone, Kim Jong-un, uh, Xi all taking an interest in, in this. And uh, as you guys know in the military, uh, or you know, anybody who's studied this stuff, an absence of power, a power vacuum is always provocative. Uh, and if Joe Biden doesn't project that image of power that we saw so often from President Trump, there could be severe consequences. Gregory, thank you so much. Interesting, to say the least. Look forward Thanks. to talking to you again.